Thursday. It's noon, actually. And we're here live with the amazing Lindsay Adler. Yes, she's Mike a Jack. portrait and fashion photographer and also a photography educator. Thanks so much for joining us, Lindsay. How are you? Nice to see you guys again. We just met for the first time like a couple weeks ago. And so this is very nice to yeah, get to exactly. join you now that I have actually met you face to face. I know. It's so nice because we booked the show and then we just happened to meet each other. I was so excited. When you uh, said who you were, I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, right. Connect the dot. Connect. So Lindsay is going to be looking at your photos, critiquing them with us. She's going to be taking your questions and... I think she's going to have a lot of great tips because I've seen her shoot and she's very amazing. But before we start with that, I have to mention that this show is brought to you by our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you need a domain website or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. They have beautiful award-winning designer templates, an all-in-one platform, 24-7 customer support. If you can drag and drop, you can make your own Squarespace website. So start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash Tony and use the offer code Tony to get 10% off. Thanks, Squarespace. Thank you, Squarespace. Thanks. Can we just look at a couple of Lindsay's pictures? She blows me away. Like she makes like she makes me want to shoot and quit at the same time. I don't know how that's possible. I love your style is so clean. There is never a distraction. Every element that's in the photo has been carefully and perfectly place there the light and the color is just amazing like the colors of the reds on the subject to the right are spectacular and then on the other hand on the left we have these like gorgeous complementary colors between the yeah. creams and the reds and the golds and the blues well you just described what i always say is so important about like how i how i treat my style is i don't let any part of the photo not be on purpose it has to be leading up to the reason I took the photo. And if not, I chuck it and I move on. Um, and so I, I shoot all the time. Um, otherwise, you know, how do you how do you get better and how do you get that control? But I, I appreciate it. I love my job. It's the best job in the world. <laughs> do you do almost all your work in the studio? You know, I do a lot recently. Part of the reason is in New York City, it's, it's sometimes a hassle uh, to shoot elsewhere, either it's crazy expensive or it's difficult to cart things around. Yeah. Um, so that was the reason I originally started to shoot in the studio was just, it was easier. And then I fell in love with the amount of control and I'm like a mini control freak, <laughs> <laughs> like maybe, maybe like a medium sized control freak. <laughs> so the, the studio really grew on me. So I would say if I do 10 shoots, nine of them are in the studio. Look at that. This one, that is just perfection. And then I right. love your versatility as well. Like I knew, you, I know you do some makeup ads, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you can just see in your work, I cannot scroll like this one on the right. Your makeup is always perfection. Everything is so clean. Even on the left, like the makeup is really highlighted, but also your styling is just amazing and how you capture it with the light and the mood. You tie it all together in a way that's just so perfect. I think you yep. are right. You must be a medium control freak because you're really just nailing every single photo. Yeah, but okay. Like I can't actually take total credit because obviously I'm working with good people, right? Um, yeah. and, and that's been years. I've been in New York for 10 years now. And over those 10 years, I've tested with a lot of different uh, makeup artists and hairstylists and, and models. And so when you work with good people, they make you look good. Like I, I shot this model last week. Uh, wait, wait, I take that back. It was like three weeks ago, but I was posting the images last week. And she just had the most incredible expressions. Like she was emoting the entire time, amazing poses, all of that kind of stuff. And so it just made me look awesome. Uh, so, I mean, obviously working with good people makes it better, but you obviously have to be able to perform your task as the photographer. Yeah, but also there are so many photographers that don't understand their own limitations. And so they're not respecting the work of the makeup artist and the stylist. And so you being able to do that and you being able to respect your model's job, that makes you a better photographer. And sure, sure. No, totally. You're, you're totally right. It's it's collaborating with people and understanding your own strengths and their strengths and learning from them, I think, too. I didn't used to have any idea about makeup at all. But now that I've been around and work with such brilliant makeup artists, I start to understand that part better, which makes me a better photographer. So I think never stopping to learn, like always learning, never stopping that, no matter if it's, you know, about photographers in the past or about current makeup trends. Like I'm, I'm a sponge. Give me as much information as you yeah. got. 
Yeah. See, one thing I, I was talking before the show when I met you, I was just very relieved about how down to earth and humble you are. And I think that that actually helps your work because you're humble enough to say, I can learn from people. I still have so much to learn and it's making you a better photographer. And I love that. <laughs> I just think that that's so nice to know that nice people are actually advancing because of that. Well, well okay. I'm going to say that I love when nice people succeed. Yes. Like, yes. Like, don't let's not be like the crazy people that are like <laughs> throwing shoes at people on set because they're angry. I mean, I hear they exist. I haven't really encountered those. I've encountered clients that are crazy like that, but not not actually photographers. I, I, I'm I'm glad that both women are starting to have a bigger place in the industry, but also nice people. <laughs> That's good too. I feel the same exact way. So meeting a nice woman in the industry, I'm just like, yes, success. <laughs> success for all of us. So we have a picture You're outnumbered, here. Tony. We got ladies on the show today. Yes. You yes. take it over. That's fine. That's fine. This, <laughs> this is our first submitted photo here. Um, I love the lighting. I love her expression. What are your thoughts, Lindsay? I actually think it's really well done. Um, I think that when I look at it, the first place that I go is to her eyes and to that expression. Um, I think that's very successful. The one thing that I'm not necessarily sold on is the hair peeking out of the top. I don't know. I got I got a little distracted by it because what's the point of the shot? So is it um, meant to be lipstick? Is it meant to be portrait? Is it meant to be hair? And so I had I was kind of looking between the lips and the hair. And so I'd either I'd showcase one showcase either the lips or the hair. But honestly, that's really well done. I agree with you. I think it's really well done. And I had the same feeling that there was like one too many things. Just yeah. Like yeah. Or like the earrings as well. Right. Like, is it is it earrings? Is it lips? Is it hair? Sometimes less is more, yes. especially with it being so elegant. Yes, I agree with you. I'll say I'm a little bumped by this light here that's On shining in from behind. How many lights do you typically work with, Lindsay? <laughs> that is a trick question because <laughs> there is no such thing as typical. Um, okay. I mean, a lot of times some of the, the more classic simple imagery is one light, yeah. but I also regularly use six. So okay. it just so depends, it depends on, yeah. Here's like a men's fashion shoot. We have some dramatic lighting. Um, so I like the, first of all, just something that people struggle with. I like the level of retouch for the guy. Um, just, I know that's not exactly the whole purpose of the shot. But it looks like you probably just cleaned up some basics. A lot of times I see people when they photograph guys and then they like way over retouch them. And that's all I see in the photo. <laughs> it, it's um, getting a little smudgy though, as I look close. Um, oh, you can see that on your end probably. Yeah, yeah you're you're is yours isn't going to be as clear as ours but i agree they did a pretty good job it's not completely blurred out and smooth like a baby oh man that, that kills it um but i i i think it works it, i don't think that you would benefit from having more lights do you guys see this is there separation between the jacket and the background or do they blend together a little bit there's a i'm going to bring up i'm just going to bring up the shadows a little so you can see what's going on yeah would you dodge and burn to separate it some, or would you hit the background with a light or backlight the subject? What would you do? I likely in this shot, I, because I think if you add a lot of lights, your eyes start paying pays more attention to that lighting. Um, I think a tiny light, tiny bit of light on the background, um, maybe with a grid. So what grids do is they focus the light. And so it would be more of a radiating glow from behind him. I think yeah. that would uh, psychologically give it a little bit of a, oh, like halo <laughs> feel to him. Yeah. Um, but keep it super subtle because otherwise it, I think it might be distracting, but I just want to make sure it doesn't blend in. Cause if it's a fashion shot, you do want to see some separation. I have a question for both of you actually, is his hand bothering you a little bit or is that just me? Like it's I was just looking at the knuckle area. I thought looked a little weird. Um, like I thought that that knuckle looked kind of funky. Yeah. Uh, maybe if they showed a little more hand just so that it wasn't all knuckle or something yeah well, like instead of turning it in like this it like a little more of a rotation so it's like a little looser of a hold it it didn't kill it for me but i definitely thought the knuckle looked weird and not to be weird we zoom back out kind of see i think also because it's a low-key photo so your eye looks at bright places so you go to the face the shirt then the hand yeah maybe it has a little bit heavy visual weight yeah. Okay. Just talking about that perfection that we were talking about earlier. 
Um, sure. Hands are really difficult. How did you learn how to shoot hands? Okay, well, I'm, I cheated because I worked with professional models. And so then I would see how they would pose hands. And so I'd actually learn from them, but right, it's learning from any environment. Um, and then I also photograph everyday people uh, as well. Like I shot a book cover of a female business executive on Sunday. And for that, I'm paying attention to the hands, but I'm kind of using what I learned from photographing professional models. That's smart. That's smart. And that's one of those details that I've seen ruined photos before where you can have just this brightly lit hand in a really creepy position. They're very expressive hands. Sure. Yeah. And that's why, that's why like in, in beauty photography, be I'd say beauty is my specialty. That's actually what I get paid to do the most. Um, if you mess up the hands, you mess up the whole shot. Cause you're only shooting from here. So if you put the, sh the hand in, like there's not that much else to, to look at. So mm -hmm. I've had to practice. And then sometimes I'm, I'm hating on people. Sometimes people just have weird looking hands. So I just don't include it. <laughs> what am I talking about like, yeah. So some, like it doesn't, you just have to have a hand in every shot. Well, there are hand models that just come in and put their hand on a yes. different model's face because hands can look really funky. <laughs> no, there totally are. There's parts agencies here in New York. So they, they specialize in the model models, their feet, or they model their hands, or they model their lips. And that's the agency. Like the person might not look like a model whatsoever, but part of them does. That's kind of cool. That would be an interesting job. All yeah, right. What's, what's this photo here that you pulled up, Tony? Um, it looks like a low key natural light portrait. I thought the I, I thought the style had some things in common with Lindsay's style and that there's not many distractions, though it is not shot in a studio. It seems to be shot in a home because there's this kind of lamp coming out of her head. Um, but I thought they were pretty careful about the composition. There's really no distractions. And uh, I liked her expression. And then there's also something I liked about the toning. And that's not something that I typically see Lindsay do. Like it's fairly low contrast and low saturation. What do you think, Lindsay? I think one of the things that struck me the most about it actually was the toning. Um, because I bet you straight out of camera, it wasn't nearly as interesting. Yeah. And I, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I think that your creative process is from start to finish. So however you want to get there. Um, and so I think the toning definitely gave me a bit more of an emotive feel. My one critique is I'm a little, I think that that shadow to just in the inside of the eye and underneath, like, I think it's just a little bit heavy. Mm -hmm. And so either what you do is could retouch it, or even just rotating the model toward like back towards the window, like even just a half inch towards that window coming, come around towards the light would have caught a little bit more light in there. Um, but I don't think it needs to be perfect lighting because this photo isn't about perfect. The hair is messy. It's meant to be emotive. So it doesn't have to be like, you know, heavily lit, exactly placed, but it's just a little dark in the eye. Yeah, I agree. That's not a really flattering place to have shadows. I also... I felt like her face looked really green. I, but I guess that's a, that's a personal choice, but I would like to see it just a little bit less green. Yeah, I totally agree that there's too much green in the shot. Yeah, and also one tip on that too is there's toning that you can do obviously in Lightroom, which is great, but there's also toning in Photoshop, just having a little more control so you can say, well, okay, I like the background or the shadows green, but maybe not the face. Yeah. You know, so selectively applying it. Yes, that's a great idea. Uh, Sam, do you have any questions from the people watching? Oh, I sure do. I do have some questions. So uh, okay. Sam, Let's... and she's going to be answering your, she's going to be relaying your questions and your comments to Lindsay. So if you have any, just ask them in the comments on YouTube and they will maybe get to her. Sam herself, an amazing portrait photographer yes. out of New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, AJ Johnson. Uh, says, I love Lindsay's work. Uh, <laughs> what were the biggest aha moments when she was first starting to develop her style, both with lighting and editing? Oh, oh man. Now that, I mean, that's an awesome question because I actually think technique is easier to learn because there's so much information out there. There's so many good educators, so many YouTube videos, so many, like, you name it. Um, so the harder part is style. Um, and so what I did is I shot everything like it, 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 soft and dreamy, dark and dramatic, like you name it. Um, and then after doing that for several years, I was trying to figure out which images had staying powers for me and which ones when I looked at, I felt were 
the truest to my style. And so I recommend people do that. So if I, if you had to right now show me, Chelsea and Tony, it's only show three photos to us to describe your style or who you are, what would they be? And when you look at those, what threads weave them together? Like what's the commonality of the subject matter? Or is there a certain color palette? Or is there lighting? Like what is emerging there? And so I did that for myself. And I realized it was the bold poppy colors. Um, it was really clean compositions. I had things that were more unrehearsed and a little grittier. And they just, they weren't singing for me. And so it actually made me better because when you do you, you know, you do your own truth, you do your own style, it, it's, going to be more authentic now i want to do that yeah yeah you're you inspiring me i'm like oh my that gosh a fantastic who question. am i what am i <laughs> <laughs> anything else sam yes definitely um let's see uh joe uh jose c says how did you decide on what direction to take your uh, photography why fashion also a good question. So I am one of those extraordinarily lucky people that knew that I wanted to do photography from an early age. So I actually went and formally filled out my business paperwork with my mom uh, at the local courthouse in my small town upstate New York when I was 15. Um, and so I didn't know that I wanted to do fashion. I actually originally didn't think I even wanted to photograph people like I, I like travel photography and that whole life and I thought that that was maybe something I would do um, and so then I shot weddings and maternity and babies and like really anything that you would shoot to have a, a you know photo studio in a small town and uh, I never thought fashion because I'm not a fashionista like clothing and brands are not of utmost important to me to me personally um, and then I started to see the work of these fashion photographers that I absolutely loved. And I realized it wasn't the clothing that was making me fall in love. It was the emotion, the style, the storytelling, the elegance, the strength of the women. Um, and so it was the freedom and style of fashion photography that attracted me, not the clothing. So I am now uh, 18 years in to having uh, a business. And so I've shot it all over that time frame, And then, uh, I've been shooting fashion now for the last really like as the only thing I've shot really the last 10 years. And it has really evolved to now being a little more specialty, even beauty. So you can always evolve and change. Um, is that something that you teach in your workshops as well? Because I know you teach a lot of workshops and mm -hmm. you have so much to offer. So <laughs> Thanks. So I just did a fashion workshop this week, um, fashion and beauty photography. And what I talked about was that people like to pigeonhole, like, okay, you can do this specific type of photography, or you can um, only shoot babies. And I, I think you can have a specialty, but I think your style is even more important than your specialty, the way that your images make, make people feel. And I think part of what you need to do is you need to explore different types of photography. Um, so I definitely, one of my most popular presentations that I give as lectures um, is a presentation called Good to Great. And it's not me claiming I'm great, but it's me looking at the greats of photography, the ones we aspire to be and seeing what commonalities they have. And their images always have purpose. So they always have a concept. Uh, they always have a style. And so that's what I think. I think technique is the foundation to express a concept and style. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Actually, we just did a podcast similar to that. Um, are these things that people can learn about at learnwithlindsay.com? Mm -hmm. yep. And they can find everything there and do your workshops and find your books. Yes. That's so I have everything there. I have um, five books. That are, those are all on Amazon. And uh, I do in-person workshops here in New York City. Those are my like special ones where you actually work with my hair, makeup, wardrobe models. Wow. You get kind of a, an idea of what that type of production is like. Um, and then on there, I also have lots of my videos. You name it, posing, cinemagraph style. That's all on there. And do you ever sleep? <laughs> oh, totally. I sleep. My boyfriend literally says I sleep twice the amount that he does. Like I need a lot of sleep. Really? But I am really good at outsourcing. Like originally, when you get when you get like originally, I feel like all photographers we're all poor. Like we all start off. Well, not, I mean, not all of us. Okay, but like we start <laughs> off struggling to make money, and then once we make some, we just want to hold on to it. I learned from another business professional that what you should do once you have some of that money is not just hold on to it, 
but start outsourcing things you aren't good at. And so that's why I have so much time is as soon as there's something that is not my core competency, I pay someone else to do it. And then I have lots of time and I just cuddle my dog in my free time and I travel in my free time. And I, it's, I have, I have plenty of free time. Oh, wow. You have you figured so out life. <laughs> <I wanna laughs> this went way deeper than just photography. This is just a life tutorial. I know. I want to be Lindsay when I grow up, except we're Oh, whatever. <laughs> Let's take a look at a portfolio. This is hosted by our sponsor, Squarespace. Chantal Laurie sent this in and Chantal has uh, sort of this grid that divides the photos into different categories. So what do you think? Lifestyle models, bloggers, or portraits? Um, I first want to say that, Lindsay, you're awesome at keeping up your portfolio as well, which is really important. Yeah. Oh, totally. So I try cute. to replace, I mean, minimum a third of my entire portfolio every year. Oh, Ideally, really? half of it should, wow. should get kicked out and get something new. Okay. That's really good advice. And that's something that we should relay to the people watching. If you have any weaker photos, if you're shooting something new and you're making something better, get rid of those weaker photos and put in fresh stuff. And right here scrolling through, you have a lot of nice photos, but I can see um, some are stronger than others. They're a little bit mixed bag. So don't be afraid to go in and, and cut some out. Yeah, I mean, especially, so first of all, I, I did want to say, especially in the beginning, there were some that hit me right away as being really emotive, uh, being unrehearsed. They looked like something that a lot of brands would want to hire you for. Uh, the quality of the work is good. So that's what hit me about some of the the earlier shots. Um, like this one too, I love the one of the the girl laughing. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, but you have many different categories, which is fine. Um, but I don't, I don't think you need more than a dozen, like twelve to twenty images. I don't know what you guys usually advise people for that. Um, but usually we're tighter... at ten to fifteen. So <laughs> I say ten to fifteen, okay. hoping they get to twelve to twenty, because <laughs> they will always put more in. Totally. Okay. So exact same thing. Cause man, like as soon as someone sees something that's not as strong, you go, oh, okay. So they also do bad stuff too. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes, exactly. Yeah. You, you get judged based on your worst photo, unfortunately, because people see a weakness there and they remember it. So just get So rid Chantal, that's, cut that's two thirds of these photo photos. friends too, to, to help you weed it out. I, I have like this, this theory of not, I know this is hard, like, don't get me wrong, but not getting attached to my work. Um, because I will regularly show it to other people and say, tell me what needs to go. Um, and, and so actually what I do, um, one of these things in New York, it's, it, they do it in other places in New York too. There's these, uh, you pay for photo critiques, not from photographers, but actually from art directors and creative directors. And, uh, I do that at least once a year and, you know, I, I will ask like anything you think should, should be cut out or what else do you need to see to be willing to hire me? And so I, I think it's really important to not just get your own opinion, which obviously you guys watching this know that. <laughs> that is really smart advice. And uh, I could learn from that advice as well. I have Tony help me, but he loves me. So he's also highly biased. <laughs> so having yeah, an art director. No, Chris loves me, but he's brutal. <laughs> really? I'll like, try to be oh, more man. like Chris. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Chris is super brutal. I'll show him a picture and he'll be like, oh, definitely not this one. But like, I'll see the expression on his face. I was like, I didn't have to like cringe at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me wrap up Chantal's portfolio review. Okay. Uh, Chantal, <laughs> our feedback is definitely trim the photos down some. I think the, the portraits are a little bit better, but you could still take out a couple of photos and that's really going beautiful. to hurt. Um, your about page looked great. Chant this is what Chantal had to say about Squarespace. Love, love, love Squarespace. I would like some more options for SEO and web positioning, but I still love them. Yeah, I totally agree. There's there's actually a lot of customizability in there and you can put in your own meta tags and stuff. So you might be able to do that and they can probably help you out. Uh, if you want your own awesome Squarespace portfolio, go to squarespace.com slash Tony. That'll get you a 14 day free trial. If you love it, then and only then you give them a credit card. You can use the coupon code Tony to get 10% off. Thanks, Squarespace. Okay. Let's look at another photo. We have five minutes, and you're like dropping gold here, Lindsay. So I want to hear some more. What do you think of this one? Okay. So you guys will have to tell me on your end about the retouching. Uh, but okay. the lighting is beautiful, very commercial. I get asked to do that type of lighting all the time for it's just fresh and clean, minimal shadows, but still has a little bit of pop to it. Um, I am not sold on the hands. I was thinking the same. Yeah, you're absolutely right. 
a lot of visual weight. Uh, my eye goes to her eyes and then just gets stuck on the hands. And I'm sure that's not where the eye should be sitting. This shot is so clean. Um, how would you handle the flyaways? Would you just leave them or do you take them out? So I would get rid of them in this shot because it's meant to be clean. Um, and so that's that's something that I, I definitely struggle with sometimes when I do uh, like a beauty shoot and it's not about the hair. So then I don't have a hairstylist, yeah. uh, but it's really got to be clean. And uh, what I usually do is I over clone, right? So like clone some of the white above, I over clone it. Um, and then I'll kind of bring it back and you can actually paint in tiny little flyaways so that it looks real. Oh, um, wow. And that's wow. usually what, honestly what hair retouchers do is they'll, they'll clean it up and then add in something just enough messiness to look like it's not fake. I didn't my even know about that. Alive. Oh my gosh. This is a technical question. <laughs> they shot this at F32, which means uh, the far eye is a little bit out of focus, but they have a nice white background. Would you shoot that white open and allow the other eye to fall a little out of focus or would you shut it down and get everything sharp? I would shoot it at F11 and get everything sharp. Okay. Um, and pretty much all of my beauty photography is somewhere on F11, F13, um, unless I go the far opposite and have a super close up and I'm wide open where it is clearly meant to be narrowed up the field. But I never have anything anywhere in between the two extremes. Chelsea, pick one more picture and then we'll let Lindsay go. Oh my gosh, but I was having so much fun. This one's crazy. I knew you were gonna pick that one. <laughs> Yeah, because I that like it's cool. It's like it's popping and it's so I don't know, it's intense. So um Whoa. Uh, all right, my end I think the retouching looks good. Yeah, it does. See? It looks good. Yeah. That's oh. nice. What, um is that one to one? This is a high resolution. Yeah, photo. this is what is this taken with? It doesn't say beautiful. That is a lot of megapixels. <laughs> it's probably like I mean it's it's beautiful. Um okay, so Going back from critique, I like two parts of it separately, but maybe not together. Um, okay. I like the hair across the face. I'm all about that. I do that all the time for close-up beauty shots. It adds emotion. It looks effortless. And I really like the makeup. I like that it's very painterly, and I like the color palette. And it's, You have a good makeup artist. Um, I'm not sure that the messy hair and the makeup like complement one another. I don't know if it enhances one another. So I would probably do the makeup a little bit, like to have the hair be a little bit cleaner and then do another shot with messier hair. Maybe not the two mixed. Yeah, I agree. It's a lot. It is a lot. They, they do both look good separately. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about, are, is this out of focus a little bit? They shot with very shallow depth of field. And uh, as as Lindsay was saying, I feel like it's a mistake. I feel like you could have shot at that at F11 and just gotten everything in focus. There's nothing to blur out here. Totally. And if you have um, lower power strobes, it's fine to go ahead. Like if you're trying to shoot at F11 and you have strobes or a speed light, maybe you shot it with that doesn't have as much output. It's fine to bump up your ISO a little bit, like 400, even 800. It's not going to really degrade the quality of your file. So don't worry about it. Like those days of, of noise and grain being a big problem is, is past. Yeah. Um, do you mind if we take one more question, Lindsay? I, listen, I made time for you guys, whatever you want. Okay. Uh, Sam, do you have any questions? Oh my gosh. We have so many questions, but I already, okay. and you were going to say one more. So I went through and I picked <laughs> one com one question and I thought I could squeeze in a comment too. So okay. there's nothing that has to be said about that. Okay. So the comment <laughs> is <laughs> Adil Jawad says, uh, Lindsay is an amazing photographer and educator. I've learned so much from her courses on creative life. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thanks for the and love fest, everybody. <laughs> and Dave Murray's question, one with his, um, it's a, sorry, Sheldon, my dog is like crying mm -hmm. in the background. <laughs> um, Dave Murray says, can you remember the very first photo sh shoot you took that you realized you had nailed it? Oh, interesting. Mm. That is an evolving feeling. Yeah. Uh, because things I thought that I nailed now, I look or nailed, you know, 10 years ago, I look back <laughs> and I go, Ooh, that was real bad. Yeah, it's torture, isn't it? Um, you know, and this is, I mean, hopefully people can relate to this. I, I, I shoot commercial work. I shoot for big magazines and still up until relatively recently, I thought that I was not good enough. Um, you know, it's really only been maybe the last three years where I was like, feeling actually confident about my work. So that means that there's 15 years of not feeling that confident. 
Um, so nailing it is, is relative. Um, a client being happy and hiring me again means nailing it to me nowadays. Like that's how I interpret it. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I mean, I feel like every shoot I nail some awesome shots and then some others are failures and I just don't show you those. And then it looks like I'm really good. <laughs> That's really smart advice. Lindsay, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and for being so generous with your knowledge. No problem. So, thank you for having me. It was great to chat with you guys. That was way too short. I know. Well, I know. we'll have to do it again sometime. I know. Let's do it again. They're all saying they want 90 minutes with Lindsay Adler <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> okay, we'll do <laughs> that again. <laughs> back. Um, and thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace. If you'd like your own Squarespace portfolio, you can get a free trial today at squarespace.com slash Tony. Use the offer code Tony to get 10% off. And we'll see you all next week, uh, normal time, Thursday at 5 o'clock. And hopefully... We can see Lindsay again. And if you'd like to see more from her, go to learnwithlindsay.com. Obviously, she has so much to teach. I'm going to be going there. And I'd really like to go to one of your workshops one day, too. Yeah, I'll Come visit that. me in New York. I, I want to come, too. And okay. I'm <laughs> you. When you guys, I'm sure, all come to New York at the same time. We should go out to dinner at least. Yes, let's do that. We'll actually be in New York soon for Photo Plus. Okay, I'll be there. You should. We should talk. I'm sure we'll be at the same events. Okay, awesome. Okay. So thank you, everyone. See you next week. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. That is all. <laughs> That's Tigar. <laughs> <laughs>